So another cool property mentioned in the paper by Kimberly and Moses is that, and I can represent this here, uh, these permutation circumellipses are dilations of the Steiner circumellipse. Okay, so here's P. Uh, the phi permutations, barycentric permutations of P, are dilations of the Steiner, this black ellipse, of triangle ABC, reference triangle ABC. I'm also drawing here the Steiner in ellipse. Recall that both the, the circle, Steiner circumellipse and the Steiner in ellipse are uh, homothetic versions of each other, uh, and they're both centered uh, on the body center X2. Okay, so you can see this quite clearly here. Here's P. I've performed the uh, uh, five permutations, and the five permutations lie on an ellipse, which is just a dilation or contraction of the Steiner in ellipse. So if I change my position of P, I get this kind of situation here. And of course, uh, let's go to the other phenomenon that I wanted to show. If P is on the Steiner itself, all my five permutations are going to ride on the Steiner itself. Okay. Now, the cool observation uh, that I want to make in this video is that uh, if you take these six points that lie on the Steiner, there's 60, 60, 60 possible orderings. Uh, which will result, result in 60 different hexagons. This is similar to something we might see in uh, the whole thing about Pascal lines. There's number 60 appears there as well. Um, so um, the observation here, which I stumbled upon quite accidentally, was that for some enumerations, so here's one of them, okay, for some traversals of the six point, you get a hexagon whose area is dynamically zero. So you can see here the area of the hexagon is being shown here, zero. Uh, and as I move P on the Steiner, the area of this polygon does not change. Now, I don't know if this is a uh, phenomenon that has to do with affine transformations that preserve area, and there's some uh, affine preimage of this that is regular, and therefore everything is gonna be symmetric. Uh, but, you know, it does not seem to me that these permutations are a fine invariant, right? So uh, this is a mystery to me. Okay, if you, if you instead of this, this particular enumeration here, okay, so let's go ahead and take one that may look natural to us. Let's go ahead and draw a polygon that is just going to be like that, okay? Something like that. So right now this is not self-crossing. And where's the area of this polygon? Here's the polygon. As I move P around, you can see that, oops, you can see that that area over here, so just keep your eyes over here, the area as I move P is variable, okay? So not all enumerations, not all orderings out of those 60 orderings are going to produce that zero area. Uh, if I do an undo and I go back to that particular ordering we had before, this one where I'm actually doing kind of a crisscross, I'm going from here to there to there there to there to there to there and I did this quite randomly as I was playing with this thing I just saw this zero pop up over here and I was like wait a second there's something wrong with this this doesn't have zero area but it turns out not only does it have zero area you got zero area dynamical okay so let me actually tack on to this video uh, something that is related to the Steiner uh, circumellipse and this is the setup we had before we had been talking about uh, this uh, uh, remark found in Kimberling and Moses' paper that the six, um, the six permutations lie on uh, dilations or contractions of the Steiner itself, right? So you can see that this is the case over here. Okay, now, uh, one of the Poncelet families that is naturally associated with the pair Steiner circumellipse and Steiner in ellipse is a so-called homothetic pair. So here's a triangle interscribed between its fixed Steiner circumellipse and its fixed Steiner in ellipse. Let's go ahead and gyrate this family. Okay, now something quite cool happens. Notice that as I gyrate this family, and I'm basically computing now, the so P has been fixed at a, some random point in the plane, and I'm just uh, dynamically showing what's happening to the five uh, permutation uh, points that must lie on this uh, 
dilation of the Steiner. But interestingly, not only do they lie on that dilation, three of those points are stationary with respect to the homothetic family. So you can see here that while three are moving, P by definition is stationary, but it's two brothers, P5 and P6, corresponding to two of those permutations, are stationary. Now, if I draw a polygon that connects, actually, let's go ahead and connect those. First of all, let's connect P to the two stationary guys. And you can see here that this is going to be a triangle that does not move. It has a particular area. It's being shown here. Uh, sorry, it's being shown here 1.93 something, which has to do with the proportions of your, your homothetic family. You know, I can obviously vary uh, my Poncelet pair here. I'm going to get a different area. But weirdly enough, the second triangle, which connects the moving P4, P2, P3, also has the same area. Uh, hang on, I actually want to jog Poncelet. So I'm going to jog Poncelet like so. And I'm going to watch these two triangles. I'm just going to keep my eye as this thing jogs. I believe I can say animation, right? And I can just keep my eyes over here. Now, it's well known that the Poncelet triangle itself has fixed area. The homothetic family conserves the area of, uh, of triangles because of the affine transformation. It's basically the affine image of a regular system. But I don't know if this new phenomenon here whereby... Uh, the stationary P5, P6, P triangle area has, is the same area as the area of this family that we're seeing uh, move around. And chances are, right, we can check that. Chances are, uh, if somebody knows how to interrupt, uh, okay, so I can interrupt the animation. Chances are that this particular family here is itself a Poncelet or homothetic family. So let's go ahead and show trace. And let's animate again. So let's look at what this thing is enveloping. And it is enveloping uh, an ellipse, which is likely, uh, I think I can say with, uh, with complete uh, certainty, that this family is also a homothetic family. And it is obvious because um, if its area is constant, that caustic must be homothetic to the outer one, so this is another homothetic family. Uh, but what is not obvious to me, at least at this point, is why over Poncelet, why over Poncelet, there's two of those permutations that do not move. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I think this is going to conclude this series of, of three videos about uh, this permutation ellipses. Please take a look at uh, Kimberling and Moses' paper uh, to get more details. Thank you very much. Bye.